Hey everybody, this is Warner. I wanted to uh, just show you a couple of things about this file. Um, number one, I appreciate all of your interest in, um, in taking a look. And I thought what would be, would be better is if I would just kind of break this down into little sections. For Some of you have asked about the bubble wand and how the displacement map works on that and how to create that. And um, I think at least one of you has asked about the bubbles. And anyway, I thought I'd try to answer some of those, but just in little sections, little chunks. So I thought I'd start with the easier one, and that would be the actual bubble. So in Moto, I rendered out this bubble, and it is, it's, it's kind of, it's not really complicated, but it would be kind of hard to explain. Um, it's not that hard though. There's just the, to get this color in here um, is just basically a noise texture that I'm using as a um, a mask over a gradient, which is kind of a rainbow gradient. It goes from a yellow to a to a green to a blue to a violet to a red, and then it's the the gradient is set to a incidence angle. And then there's another layer, and I should probably have Moto open to show you this, but anyway, just bear with me. There's another layer that is in effect also, but it's a, it's a gradient. And um, let me see if I can find that for you. All right, this is the gradient also. And this is sitting right on top of the bubble. And it is mass it's, a, it's also set as a mask, but it's set as color dodge as the blend mode and I don't really know I mean I know Photoshop pretty well and I know how blend layers work but when you start to add a lot of different things into a composition you just kinda have to play with what settings work best for your you know what effect you're trying to get and anyway that just kinda worked for me I set up a couple of lights and you can actually see um, actually these are light panels there's one underneath um, luminous polys is what they would be and there's one on the on the right and on the left and on the bottom and then it's set to about 98 percent um, transparency with the um, the material that's underneath all of it and anyway um, hopefully that makes sense but basically what you get is is this and then as you turn the as I would actually turn the object um, the bubble th these color patterns would change and so you'd get various kinds of of patterning. So it's not just it doesn't look the same. Each bubble doesn't look the same. So I did about five of those. And anyway, it turned out um, pretty well, well enough to use. I rendered it at a at a high um, kind of. This is a close up of the bubbles. I rendered it about this size, and then in Photoshop I just sank. Um, I shrunk them down a little bit, and that's so there you can see see these are the same bubbles this is the same bubble so I tried to kind of mix the sizes up a little bit but the the problem that I ran into and I thought would be helpful is that once you render this out I rendered it rendered it in moto against a black background but then when you bring that even though I had a channel to separate the alpha when you bring that into Photoshop I'll show you what you get um, let me just close this and I will select all and I'll copy it and I'll come over to my main document and I'll paste it okay oops alright so this is what you get now when I try to step out separate out the alpha all this color and all just basically everything that made this look nice um, just got blown out so what I tried to do and this is a lot of layers here. The, the the what makes this work is that I have a blend mode here set to screen, and then by setting it, oops, by setting it to screen, I don't have to do any masking. It's just all within the context of move this layer up. All within the context of this image, it works. So you can really, especially um, back out a little bit especially in here it, it holds its transparency and it, I was really surprised how well that, that actually worked but anyway from there of course you can just scale it down and that's what I did 
Um, I keep doing that, sorry. Anyway, so that's that. Now, up here, where it looks like it, the bubbles look like they are kind of, um, where they're, you know, distorting what's behind them, like over here, and you can see um, this is a good area to look at for that. That's basically, that's all Photoshop work and what I'm, a composition. Now in terms of actual art cleanup, there's very little I had to do um, to clean the thing up after I rendered it. And I can show you at some point the before and after, but there's really nothing. I can show you here on the bottle. Let's just take the bottle. Forgive me for jumping around like this a little bit, but hopefully you, it's, it'll make sense and you'll kind of just bear with me. Um, I knew that I wanted a warm section and then a cooler section just to give it a little bit more visual interest, to give it a little bit of depth. And so I took the... The cool thing about Moto is that it'll it'll tra it'll carry this alpha over. So it, this material is is transparent, and there's actually a material inside it. You can't see it so well in this render, but this little line there's there's a a water material in there, a, a fake water material. Anyway, um, it helps with the a little bit with the refraction, but probably not much to notice. Anyway, my point going back to the bottle is that I created I had my regular bottle which looks like this and then I added a warm channel well not a warm channel I duplicated this layer and then just through um, hit command U in Photoshop with the hue saturation I was able to change the color of of that particular and this is not affecting what I want it to affect but anyway I, you're able to change the color of this layer and so I made it warmer and then I masked out see there's a mask here on um, let's see if I can do this that's not what I wanted select the layer okay and then hit uh, command U um, this you probably have done this before if you work with Photoshop you've done it before where anyway I, I wanted that to be a warm color so I duplicated the layer made it warmer then I masked out what I didn't want to be warm and then I made another a cooler layer and it sits on top but it's still it's masked out so this is cooler see how the temperature changes a little bit and anyway it's something you may not have noticed but it just makes it in my opinion looks look a little natural more natural more more interesting anyway um, a lot of this stuff is is com is combined in Photoshop and so the refracting material of the bubbles that's all in Photoshop I'm sure you could do that in Moto but I'm not I'm not that good to do that and I'm not nearly as patient the what I did want was the actual bubble material to to look cool so I knew that I probably couldn't paint paint something like that as as cool as Moto could render it and anyway so this this little highlight or this little section in here that's just a that's just painted in Photoshop but um, yet yeah, let me I think that answers the thing about the bubble the question about the bubble it's all about blend layers um, or the blend modes rather and you're in the Photoshop layers so let me just hide that bring this back up to where it was and we'll talk about the ridges